Drake has officially announced there's going to be a game two, a part two to this Kendrick Lamar beef. Oddly enough, why would you ever give Kendrick Lamar a heads up? Even if there is, even if you do have some type of like world changing verse or bar or strategy or plan to take down Kendrick Lamar, why would you give him a heads up after he didn't prove with that fourth quarter comeback in game one? Why would you ever give him a heads up? He proven he's a strategist. He's proven he's a tactician. He's proven he's very crafty. Yo, you want to beat Kendrick Lamar by catching him off guard, but Drake gave him a heads up. So apparently Drake is confident. But I don't think the game two that Drake is describing is the game two that a lot of people is picturing. Let me explain. Drake posted this video of Rashi Wallace in the 2004 NBA Finals to his Finsta. <laughs> bro, I hate saying Finsta, bro, because Drake is 35. Why do you have a Finsta? I'll put it in the front page, back page, middle page, wherever. Headliners, column one or two, we will win game two. Got back it off. We will win game two. Obviously, the clip was intentional. The Pistons played the Lakers in the 04 Finals. Lakers, LA, Kendrick, Kobe, I. So the Lakers won game one. The Pistons, you know, Rashid Wallace said, yo, we're going to win game two. And they ended up winning the entire series. So that right there was the intent of the clip, obviously saying, yo, we're going to win game two against Kendrick Lamar. But game two isn't what people think is going to be. People think it's going to be Drake is about to ignite the beef again by dropping a diss track going directly at Kendrick Lamar. Those days are over. They're not going to engage in a rap beef and a rap feud again. Game two is about the moment is about who owns the culture, and that comes through the album. You see, Drake's plan is to win the album war with Kendrick Lamar and seize the moment. He's trying to do the Kendrick Lamar what Kanye West did to 50 Cent in 2007, where essentially it's two giants in the industry, right? They both had diametrically opposing sounds, fan bases, music type. One's a dweeb, the other is a street dude, and they're both competing for the culture, right? Whoever wins this album battle, whoever sells the most, whoever has the most impactful album wins the culture and takes over the moment, right? And unfortunately for 50 Cent, Kanye West won that battle, but it was set up for Kanye West to win because they wanted 50 Cent out of here. Kanye won the battle decisively. He beat him in first week sales, second week sales, week spent in the top 10, chart position, et cetera, et cetera. He even won in like the critical reception where Rolling Stone rated him higher, Pitchfork rated his album higher. So because Kanye West won this album war, Kanye West won the moment, and Kanye West was like numero uno at the top, and essentially 50 Cent had to get up out of here. That's just the most obvious example of how an album battle can redirect the narratives in the culture and reshape the landscape of it. So Drake's ultimate plan for game two is the album battle, is the war for the culture. Because Drake believes, listen, I probably can't beat Kendrick Lamar in this rap battle. And because I lost a rap battle, there's this monkey on my back now where people think it's over for me. Where now I have to prove myself. Every song I drop, everything I do is heavily scrutinized and criticized. And it feels like my moment is fleeting. But I heard Kendrick Lamar about to drop an album soon. So let me throw out the 100 gigs, throw out a bunch of songs, have the people choose the sound they like the most. And then I reshape and cultivate an album surrounding what, like, like what the people want. And once I have a set of 10 to 15 songs that I believe are solidified, guaranteed hits when they drop based on the feedback I've got from dropping 100 gigabytes, now I have an album that I believe can outperform anything Kendrick Lamar dropped. And if Kendrick Lamar announced an album date and I dropped the same day as Kendrick Lamar, now it's a battle. And if I, Drake, can outsell Kendrick Lamar, outchart Kendrick Lamar, and last longer than Kendrick Lamar, then I have now reclaimed the moment in the culture. And it's now a Drake moment opposed to a Kendrick Lamar moment. And we know fans of hip-hop, bro. Moments are fleeting. Like, if they go back and forth and drop on the same day, this rap battle is like, like, this rap battle will be long forgotten. If Drake drops and goes number one, and Kendrick Lamar goes number two, Drake is now the king of hip-hop. He's not the king of the culture. And we would have to respect that. That's what game two is. Not no diss record, not no diss track. 
it's no coincidence that Kendrick Lamar homie posted Kendrick is coming in academics voice. And then Kendrick Lamar's literal cousin literally verified it by apparently texting Kendrick Lamar, yo, right? <laughs> like, yo, uh, is the album coming or is you just on Demon Time, right? And he wrote back, we coming. But publicly, Kendrick Lamar has backed away from the narrative that he's dropping an album soon. Because Kendrick Lamar understands the art of war and he understands the art of surprise. He's not about to feed into Drake's plans. He's not about to, like, essentially fall into what Drake wants him to do. No. Right? He, yo, he's going to have Drake on edge. He's going to have Drake on the tip of his toes. Which is why I'm extremely shocked. Because before this Kendrick Lamar battle, I was telling you, and a lot of others were telling you, yo, Drake is the most strategic, crafty, cunning rapper we met. Yo, Drake is extremely smart due to his strategy against Meek Mill and against other rappers. But when you look at his battle against Meek, you sit back and wonder, wait, hold up, bro. What, like, is Drake as smart and strategic as we think? Or is Meek Mill just stupid, right? Because in this battle with Kendrick Lamar, where, yo, you actually have to think and use your brain and out strategize him, yo, Drake is coming short every set of the way, and he's just making bad and wrong decisions every time. And due to how badly Drake is handling this, bro, I have to ask myself, man, is Drake as strategic, as cunning, as smart as we think? Or was he just smart in a room full of dumb niggas? Right there, like, did he just come across as, a, as extremely smart, extremely crafty, extremely calculated because he was going against, like, rappers like Meek Mill, who is not? Because it doesn't make sense. And this is the same mistake he made with Family Matters, right? He played everybody the record, had people hand the record beforehand. Obviously, the contents of the record got leaked to Kendrick Lamar, and Kendrick Lamar had it all set up, meet the Grams, had the family angle, had a response for everything Drake was already saying in Family Matters. Because, again, Drake ran his mouth a little too early. Now, this time around, he's running his mouth a little too early, giving Kendrick Lamar ample time now to prepare. And let's make one thing clear here, too, yo. Like, it's not a, you know, and I hope Drake knows this. It's not a guarantee you're about to outsell Kendrick Lamar. Like, it's not a guarantee you're about to outsell him. Like, like we know this, right? <laughs> like, it's not a slam dunk you're about to outsell Kendrick Lamar. Because if Kendrick Lamar gives us, let's say, another damn, right? If he resorts back to the pop version of, of like Kendrick Lamar and gives us a West Coast-themed pop album, I, yo, I don't know. I think it's neck and neck at that point, bro. I think it's neck and neck because I think a West Coast theme pop album created primarily for the charts. And that's going to do like 500,000 copies first week. It's going to be neck and neck. See, the mistakes that Drake made with Family Matters, bro, is Drake let it be known. Okay, my strategy is I'm going to make a pop record. I'm going to make a record people can dance to. And that's going to be how I beat Kendrick Lamar. Right? Low, you know, cute disses and a dancing record. Kendrick Lamar, because, again, because Drake is just blabbering mouth and everywhere, bro, laying out his strategy. Kendrick Lamar said, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a, you know, a dancing record with cute disses too. So, at this point, I don't know, man. I, yo, I, I'm hoping Drake got a plan, bro. I'm hoping Drake, like, Drake has something that's going to really bring him back on top. But it looks like, bro, he's making all the wrong decisions and all the wrong moves, man. All right? Y'all let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think about this, all right? Like, like what do y'all think? Do y'all think Drake got something? Do y'all think Game 2 is going to be in Drake's favor? Let me know, all right? And if you're still watching, man, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out how this former No Jumper employee came back to squabble Adam-22. Click on this video here to find out why. I'm going to see you guys in this video. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.